Hello and welcome. Your comments and suggestions will help me produce more content that will be useful to you. I cannot guarantee that I'll cover a certain topic, but if there's sufficient interest, I'll be happy to do it for you. So please, if you like this video or find the information useful, please subscribe. Thank you. Now let's get on with the review of this B-Side S10 Smart Multimeter. Let's talk about what's good. So what's good about this multimeter? Think of it as a Swiss Army knife. Compact, small, lightweight, fits in your pocket, takes up very little space. This is barely larger than a pack of cigarettes, and it is thinner than a pack of cigarettes. This type of multimeter is exactly what you need for basic common measurements, where you don't need high accuracy, but you just need to verify things, such as AC, DC voltage, and it does have true RMS measurement for the AC voltage, uh, continuity, to see if wires are broken or not, switches are working or not, resistance, capacitance, measuring diodes, transistors, seeing if they're good or bad, uh, LEDs, white, green, blue, whatever, and uh, for low frequency measurements and for duty cycle measurements. Again, this meter is small, light, handy, and it runs on common AAA batteries batteries that you can find anywhere for a cheap price. That is important if you don't use the meter that much. If you store this meter away for emergencies or uh, if you're a prepper and you just want to take something out and turn it on and use it, then using AAA batteries is important because you don't have to recharge anything. You don't have to have any rechargeable batteries. And of course, if your rechargeable batteries stop working, you'll have to go ahead and open up the meter just to change out the rechargeable batteries. So that's very inconvenient. And so uh, basically, um, a quick note, there is a version of this meter which has the same specifications. It's called the S11, and that has rechargeable batteries as well as having a protective rubber case that goes around the meter. So uh, let's talk about what's bad or not so good about this meter. The non-contact voltage sensing is not as sensitive as a dedicated NCV non-contact voltage probe. If you're doing non-contact voltage testing, you've got to hold the top of the meter up to a live wire in order to detect it. And in fact, at the end of this video, we'll show a little demonstration and you'll see. Uh, now, uh, a non-contact voltage meter, uh, voltage tester can be more sensitive than this one. and can actually be held a couple inches away. This one has to be held almost on top of the wire in order to detect voltage. Uh, there is very slow response on the temperature measurements. If, for example, uh, you do what I did and you put this outside in freezing temperatures, it can take well over five minutes for the correct temperature to show up on the display. So it's slow on temperature measurements, slow to respond. There's no Bluetooth connectivity, there's no Wi-Fi connectivity, and the faceplate is it's a nice plastic, as are all the plastics on this case, very good quality moldings, but the front plastic is soft and susceptible to scratching. So you might want to put it in a protective carry bag or carry case, one that's padded and protects it from shock and impacts. And of course, uh, the last item that's a disadvantage is the plastic case in the meter. On the inside, there are no metal shielding plates and there is no metal shielding paint on the inside of the case. So if there are any stray uh, radio frequency fields, say from a cell phone or transmitters, handheld radios nearby, it can affect the measurements or affect the accuracy of the measurements. So be aware that if you're using this in a, a rich RF environment, that you'll have to go ahead and uh, be careful that the radio fields close by are not causing errors with your measurements. So. Uh, one other thing I want to mention, too, is if you look at the probes, these are standard test probes, but what's not standard, if you see here, the ends of the probes that connect to the bottom of the meter are non standard. They're smaller in size than normal. So you notice these are the test probe connections, but these are smaller than normal. So if you need a set of replacement probes, you'll have to go ahead and buy them from your meter supplier again. And... Uh, that might be an issue because if you don't like these standard probes and say you want to cut off these regular test probes and put on alligator clips 
or mini clips, you'll have to buy a new set of probes, cut these off, and then attach your alligator clips or mini clips, because these that connect to the meter side are not standard in size. So uh, let's move along. And so in this meter here, we're going to uh, go ahead and uh, talk about the price here. This was purchased in December of 2021, and the price with shipping from China to the United States was 20 US dollars. Free shipping, it took about two weeks for arrival. So relatively fast given the free shipping. And thank you to ALI Express uh, for the fast shipping. Uh, now the accessories included are only the test probes. No batteries are included. Uh, there is a small instruction sheet which tells you the features and functions of the meter. The print is very small, so you may not be able to see it on this video, but it gives an overview. Um, let's take a look here. The instructions, oh, English, Chinese, no Spanish, no French. Okay, well, the instructions are usable. So let's put the instructions back and let's continue. And so the weight of the unit is 4.8 ounces or 136 grams. Uh, the power source, it's AAA batteries. It takes two AAA batteries. The dimensions are five inches and five eighths of an inch long, uh, two and three quarters of an inch wide, and five eighths of an inch thick. And in, in uh, metric measurements, it's 14.3 centimeters tall. 7 centimeters wide and 1.6 centimeters thick. Now the, uh, the unit has a couple of uh, basic functions and everything is accessible in terms of functions through push buttons. So we'll start by turning this unit off. So if you push the power switch, so now it's off. When you turn it on, this is what you get. A long press and it turns the power on and it's an automatic mode when it starts. So in automatic mode, this is probably where you want it to be if you're just doing general measurements. Uh, so if you attach a, a voltage source to it, AC or DC voltage, resistor, capacitor, diode, it attempts to try and detect what is connected to it and it does the measurement accordingly and the temperature reading is always on so for the temperature reading here see if you hold down the function button and do a long press it changes between Celsius measurements and Fahrenheit measurements for temperature if you short press the function button that's where you actually fit through the functions. If you press the capacitance button, it also flips through a couple other functions. And this is your flashlight button. If you go ahead and press the flashlight button, so you long press the flashlight button, it turns on the flashlight. If you short press, press the flashlight button, it holds your reading on the screen, so it doesn't change. So let's go ahead and take it off hold. Let's go ahead and turn off the flashlight. Let's go back. So let's press the function button again. And now we're back to automatic. Now let's press it and we'll flip through the measurements. This is DC voltage. This is AC voltage. And it does true RMS measurement of the AC voltage. Let's press it again. Here we have diode check, which can be used to test LEDs diodes, silicon diodes, as well as transistors. And so let's press it again. Now we have non-contact voltage detection. I will show you this at the end of the video. This is live wire detection to detect the hot wire on your AC or mains uh, power lines. Press it again. And this measures frequency and duty cycle of your AC voltage it again, press it again, and we're back at auto measurement. So let's press the capacitance button. And so here, 
Okay, this measures capacitance in nanofarads. Press it again and it shows the uh, measurement in mega ohms. This is your resistance measurement. Press it again and this is your continuity measurement. And the continuity responds fairly quickly and the buzzer does work. So it lets you know if it is a, a good solid connection. And we're back to capacitance. So let me press the function button again and we're back to automatic. And so uh, one thing to note here, you see the power indicator on the display. If you hold down the power button, that turns off that power indicator. Now it is having the automatic power off disabled. By default, when you turn it on, the automatic power off is turned on. So it'll shut off after a few minutes of non-usage. But if you go ahead and long press it, the automatic power off is enabled again. If you're using the meter for a long length of time and stopping and not doing measurements, this might turn off on you. And uh, if you're at the top of a ladder and you're measuring voltage on wires, that could be annoying. So it's probably best to long press the power button, turn off the automatic power off, and this will never turn off on you. And so um, looking at the back of the unit, here we have a battery compartment. A half a turn on that screw opens up the compartment, and there are two AA, sorry, two AAA batteries in here. And uh, they run for a decent amount of time. I haven't done a rundown test yet, so I don't know how long it actually lasts, but it does last quite a while. And so again, the uh, common AAA batteries that you can get anywhere. And so let's put this meter down and let's go ahead and uh, do two more things here. Let's go ahead and do a non-contact voltage test and we'll compare it to another uh, non-contact voltage tester. And we'll also go ahead and uh, do a screenshot of the specifications of the unit. So bear with me as I move the camera.